Welcome to another episode of Ghost History Medium. We are super excited. We made the short trek out to the Fairy Cave, which is at Ghost Lake on Shades of Death Road. We came just at sunset. The sun is absolutely stunning and beautiful on the frozen pond. And we can't wait to sit down and see if we can connect with anyone from history here. So as I start to open up to this location, um, I had already previously asked for permission before we even started filming in this area because I felt like that was really important. Um, we uh, really need to approach this place with a lot of reverence and a lot of grace and a lot of... Um, Uh, peace is like the other word that's coming to me like you need to come here with those attributes um, <clears throat> what's also coming to me is that it is a sacred spot and I do which doesn't make any sense but I do see their encampments around this pond which doesn't make any sense because it's like very cliffy and very mountainous but I do see encampments around here, not like in, like, not right here in front of it. That wouldn't make sense. But I am seeing like encampments. I'm seeing children. I'm seeing women. I'm seeing children. Oh, these are, sorry, uh, Native Americans. Native American children, Native American women, encampments, playing, carefree. So they, they definitely had a spot here. Um, the, and I do feel like why they would come here was is because this is a very deep lake. Like, it's really deep. So there might be bigger fish here than one would think just by, like, looking at the surface of, of how big it is. It's very deep. So they came here for the fish. I'm also seeing that they came here for uh, the aquatic plant life that lived here because they would eat it. Hmm. Uh, I am seeing like a lot of lilies, a lot of, um, uh, like leekweed, a lot of stuff that they could like dry and, and, um, and eat. So they would do that here as well. But this, this particular cave, I don't know, something about it, something is like, I just got chills on my left leg. Um, okay, so who is here? So there is a male Native American here. He's maybe in his 30s to 40s. He um, is broad-shouldered. He does not have a shirt on. He has like a, a loin down to a loin uh, cloth-ish stuff down to his knees. Um, kind of like pants, like leggings, but like they stop at his knees. Um, he has his hair, he has a hair like in one spot in the back and it's braided, that one spot. He has marks on his face and he, he immediately confronted me as we were coming here. Immediately confronted me of, um, and assessed me, like really mm. hardcore assessed me. What are your intentions? What are you doing here? Um, and then once I like explained what we were doing and, and, you know, um, you know, we weren't going to cause any harm or damage or anything like that. Um, he kind of just like allowed, allowed it in. Um, but so he's like a sentry or like a sentinel and like guardian, but he, and he's not just a sentinel for this cave. Like he's a sentinel also for this lake. So I don't know if this lake was also sacred and like they came here and did like, um, water rituals as well. Um, yeah. Like I'm getting like, it would also be like a sentinel to protect the water. I don't know if there was like, something was specific to this lake, like a, a, a bigger fish, uh, like <laughs> huh. big turtles or like, I don't know, something, it was a food item, some kind of food item huh. was here and, and they, they used that. It was like a bigger fish or like big turtle, like they would hunt big fish, big turtle at this lake. Okay. The other, the other... So you're mostly getting Native American? Yes. But, uh, in, yeah, right now. So I'm also trying to be like, so the other thing that's coming up with this cave is something fake. 
like it's fake and like I know like archaeologists or whoever don't want to really hear that but something about this is fake I don't know if it's been falsely enlarged enlarged made bigger like the, the, the lake no the cave the cave or um, like the floor was dirted over like something of this is fake now and not real hmm. and not in like I don't know if it was falsely enlarged. Uh, I mean, it's possible the Native Americans falsely enlarged it, mm -hmm. but I don't... I mean, they didn't really have, like, chain, you know, like, blasting material. And the re one of the reasons why I oh, say... Oh, you mean in, like, dynamite, like, open this up a little bigger. Like, artificially, it's not like a or real like cave. Or, like, jackhammer. Like, I'm, I'm seeing, like... Like, mining? M like mining stuff, but I don't think it's for mining. I think it's, I don't know. It's like th something made it bigger. So I don't honestly know how original, and this is a very strange thing to say because I know this is like a really historic spot. I don't know how much of this is actually true to what it looked like back then. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. I feel like it has to do with how the cave looks today is not even vandalized they're not even specifically upset about the vandalization although that the so their opinion on that is um it's surface so it's surface um you can't you can't wipe away you can't wipe away the soul from the surface mm -hmm. the soul the soul and the essence of it is still there you can't wipe it away from the surface that's what they're saying with that so like that doesn't really bother them but something about this isn't right, isn't true to form, and is false. I am seeing different generations here. So I am seeing, um, oh, I'm seeing some fancy women up here, uh, like on a, like they would take their horses on the carts and their like bows would be like, let's go to the cave or something like that. And mm. they would be like, have like a little adventure. I am seeing that. I am seeing like young boys appear uh, from like the 1800s, exploring, fishing. Uh, I do get the sense that this pond has been here for a long time. And obviously this cave has been here for a long time. But something has changed about it from what it was originally back then to the Native Americans. Uh, false. Yeah, so he's saying that um, it's the surface, but you can't erase the essence. Like, you can change the surface, you can burn a house down, you could do, I don't know why that came out, but you can burn a house down, but the house was still there, and the, the family name is still there. So that that's that. I'm also seeing very misty, very misty on the lake, very misty on the lake. And I am seeing, like, an orb, like a big, big white orb. It might be the sentry as he shows himself. But I am seeing a big white orb. People might see orbs here at night. Mm. You might see orbs here floating on the water. I'm seeing it and it's floating along the water and in misty. This would be like mist in the spring, mist in the fall, mist in the summer. Summer mornings would have mist. Um, which can make it a little dangerous to, uh, to boat or fish on. Because of that mist... And because of the, the, like, the weeds, I am seeing it like a deep, deep. So as we were going down Shades of Death Road, I did get uh, that that was, I saw wagons on the road, so lots of wagons. Um, it was a travel road, travel road with wagons. Uh, this would be like the 18, 1800s, like, I'm talking, like, 18, hmm. 1810 to uh, 1910 time frame, mm -hmm. which is a wide time frame, but I think that road's been there for a long time. Uh, and I did, I did get the sense. Okay, so in the woods over there, I saw Native American people walking. I think they were hunting, but like walking, hunting parties, walking and hunting parties, walking around. And the name I get for a name that keeps coming up is. Monkakakawa. That's something. <laughs> yeah. Monkakakawa. 
with case. Mankakawa. <coughs> Mankakawa. There's definitely a k sound in that. Mankakawa. Mm. Um, yeah, so the, on those roads, I see, I saw carts, I saw wagons as a, as a traveling path, an old traveling path. Um, and I did get the sense that there was some type of um, uh, mm, <laughs> okay, I did get the sense that there was some kind of like murder or massacre that had to do with this road. And it did feel like Native American on colonial. Hmm. Something about uh, invading a house, it had to do with a house, invading a house. I want to say like four, four people died. I got head, hair, head pain and neck pain and also stomach pain, like, like slash. Yikes. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they Eight. were like runaways, like the Native Americans were like runaway Native Americans. It didn't, fe yeah. Like maybe, uh, I don't know why this is coming up, like maybe a type of, like a group of bandits of them? I don't feel like it was like an organized thing from like one of the major tribes. Like, I, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, a something about retaliation, getting back at, back at them. Mm. And retaliation um, in, within the tribe or with like the colonials to white men? Uh, the year I'm getting with that is 1765. Hmm. So that road must have been there even longer than that. I don't know. Well, I, obviously we'll have to look at the history. I, I could be entirely wrong. <laughs> but I don't... Mm, I feel peace here. I feel... I do feel energy, but... It's retreated a lot. Hmm. And there is a sentry here. For sure. I even see him with like an ins like maybe even like a flute or a pipe. Something something long and wooden. He has something long and wooden. Might be a pipe. Huh. He's sitting cross legged now. He's sitting cross legged. Like pondering? Brooding? No, he's sitting cross legged and smoking his pipe. And like Is there any messages that you have that you would like to pass along about this place? My brothers came from far and wide to come here. Uh, he's using the word holy. I don't think they had that word holy, but he's using that word holy to me. And my attention keeps being drawn up to that hill as well. I don't know anything about that hill. Hmm. But something about the top of that hill as well. There might be um, another spot. Another potential Native American spot up there. Because that... Um, yeah, he's saying because that looked west. This looks more south. That looks more west to the thunder. Or maybe the storms come that way. Hmm. Hmm. He's saying my family purged this place. I think that means like, um, like sacred smoke and like clearing and stuff like that. Were you a chief? Mm. He says he doesn't use those terminologies now because he's just a representation of them all. Mm. That's cool. Yeah, so he's like, 
I could be the chief, I could be the medicine man, I could be your I could be the son, I could be the child, I could be the father. Because I'm all I'm all of them here. It's very wise. Um, as I've seen the days go, the days come, the days will go and come again. And I see all that is done here. I see all that is here. Uh, it, it doesn't sad, like he's not sad from it. Like, that's not his job. His, his, he's saying his job is not to judge. His job is not to judge what has happened. It is just to be a century here. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, let's see if we can go in a little further and see if we can get uh, anything else inside. Okay. So we went to, we're now like all the way in the back of the cave. I mean, it does go in like another five five feet back there and it, it kind of swings way up to the top. Um, I feel a little giddy here. That's interesting. Really? Yeah. Why do you feel that way? I don't know. I just feel a little giddy. I feel um, a little playful and joyful. The top of my head is tingling. Huh. Hmm. Are you getting a, a person at all? Or are you getting any vibes? Um, <clears throat> seeing women and children again. Back there. And there's a fire back there. I don't know why they would put a fire back there. Yeah, I was going to say the smoke. So maybe it does go all the way up. Hmm. It's possible. Seeing them huddled for warmth. This is like prehistory old. These are old Native Americans. I keep hearing something over there too. It's like hissing. It's like sounds like hissing. Hmm. Or it sounds like hissing. Yeah, these are, um, this is a small band, very small band of Native Americans. I want to see maybe two or three women and like two men and like two children. Like very small band. Um, here huddling. Yeah. Uh, I keep wanting to call this like <laughs> Precambrian, but like that's like dinosaurs. Mm. It's not dinosaurs because obviously there were no people in the dinosaur age. This was like pre pre this age of Native Americans. It's like the age of Native Americans right before it. I'm not aware of that, that name. They, um, they have furs, they look very ancient, ancient people, ancient, ancient, ancient people. I, I want to say, like, this goes back, like, 5,000 years or something like that. Huh. Yeah, really old. I don't think they speak a language that, um, is recorded. And they're worried about um, warmth. It's the winter. They're worried about warmth. They're worried about food. Let's see if we can do an EVP. Hmm. So we just exited the, the cave and I'm just trying to see if there's any last information. So, yeah, this cave is pretty impressive. Um, Something about it doesn't seem original. Something about it doesn't seem like it's how it was back when the Native Americans used it. Mm -hmm. um, being all the way back in there, I did get sensations of really old Native Americans 
really ancient Native Americans using this, and I would say more recent Native Americans using this as like a religious um, uh, ceremonial location, but they would still like camp out. There is this uh, Native American sentry here. Um, I'm not going to pronounce the name again because I can't. And uh, <laughs> he gave it to me. I don't know. I can't. Mashinaki. I can't. Um, but yeah, I'm really glad we came here today. Me too. It was really nice to see it. even the sun coming down. It was, and now it's cold, but it was really nice before. Um, maybe we'll come back here sometime in the spring or summer and see what this pond looks like, Ghost Lake. So we'll look forward to the investigation reveal. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.